fellows and partners in crime. Let me welcome you to another brand new session of the Finance Reef Pro. Today, spot on to the future of banking. But before we jump into the discussion about the future of banking and how it could look like and what role open banking will play, and of course what open experience is, I would like to thank everyone who already subscribed to the channel because we achieved more than 500 subscribers on the weekend. That is a huge gain. Now it's time to get serious. But before we start, I would highly recommend to watch my embedded finance video as this will be tremendous important for this video and will explain it to you more in detail what's about in the future of banking. Or maybe you should watch it afterwards to understand it more perfectly what embedded finance can mean also for the future of banking. I found some great content for you uh, in the beautiful world of the internet and also in YouTube and with other channels and I would like to share with you those videos to give you a high level explanation about what open banking is, what open experience is and between those videos I will also jump in and explain you more about how we will find open banking already in some countries globally and also what vision I personally have for the open experience piece and what roles different players in that kind of ecosystem will have or could have. So enjoy. Over the last decade, large and successful digital players in various industries have used open application programming interfaces or APIs to connect their services with apps and websites of third parties. Today, open API technologies have evolved to an extent that allows them to be applied by the financial services industry, where security is key. This opens up new opportunities for banks and other financial services providers to offer innovative digital services themselves. The emerging business model open banking empowers end customers to control and share their personal account data with third parties of their choice through offering a new range of products. As a result, financial services become more relevant in the digital space for end customers and compliance with new regulation is made easier. By embracing open banking, Banks can build on their key assets, trust, reach, and know your customer to grow digitally. Now let's summarize again what open banking is. It is a system under which banks open up their APIs, allowing third parties to access financial information needed to develop new apps and services and providing account holders great financial transparency options. That means for customers that you can share your financial data with apps and websites to improve your banking experience. And only companies that have passed industry security checks can take part. So it's safe, secure and convenient. It also empowers customers to take charge of their finances and make informed decisions to manage their accounts. At the end of the day, we can say that you're the master of your own data and you can decide who can have an insight or who should view those data or not. Now let's have a look on the world map and identify those countries where open banking is already a hot topic. Here you can see a world map about open banking and the adoption worldwide. You know, Europe might reasonably claim to be the cradle of open banking after all PSD2 and the UK's open banking standard pioneer that, but look around now and open banking initiatives are popping up everywhere. It is not just a matter of replicating the European approach elsewhere. Juristications are adopting their own approaches to open banking, reflecting their markets and policy objectives, and in some cases developing cross-industries approaches beyond financial services. There are too many open banking initiatives to list them all and across several dimensions including implementation timelines, the range of products and services 
and the type of institutions and third parties in scope. However, they all fall broadly into one or two categories, market-driven or regulatory-driven. Market-driven countries are India, Japan, Singapore and South Korea, but also the US. But they don't currently have formal or compulsory open banking regimes, but their policymakers are introducing a range of measures to promote and accelerate the take-up of data sharing frameworks in banking. In Singapore, for instance, MAS and the Association of Banks have published an API playbook to support data exchange and communication between banks and fintechs. In Japan, the FSA has established an authorization process for TPPs, third-party providers, introduced an obligation for banks to publish their own open APIs policies and encourage banks to contract with at least one third-party provider by 2020. The majority of Japanese banks are taking this regulatory encouragement very seriously and are on track to fulfill the 2020 deadline, or they already fulfilled that. The US have also opted for market lead approach but without any material government initiatives to support the development of open banking products and services. However, due to the highly fragmented and state-based nature of banking and banking regulation in the US, as well as a cultural aversion to red tape, there is a little discernible appetite currently for taking this forward and issuing a common federal policy on open banking. After we have understood what open banking is, where we can find it globally, we should look on the next steps of open banking, or let's call it the evolution of open banking, which is called OpenX or Open Experience. Let's continue on their journey to true open banking. A new ecosystem has emerged. OpenX, where X stands for experience, is exemplified by four fundamental market moves. From product to experience. From assets on the balance sheet to assets and data from ownership to shared access, and from building or buying to partnering. According to the World Fintech Report 2019 from Capgemini and EFMA, to succeed in this new OpenX reality, banks and non-banks will need to be able to create and leverage a shared marketplace or platform and embed themselves seamlessly into the customer journey by making the financial transactions transparent. Various API monetization models will also play vital roles in the OpenX landscape, and players must work towards standardizing APIs or risk creating new problems. Although banks and fintechs have come to embrace the idea of collaboration, challenges still remain. Security and compliance concerns, as well as culture fit and an inability to collaborate effectively, are preventing many players from capitalizing on open environment opportunities. As a result, a large number of firms already late in preparing for open banking now find themselves lagging behind even more as the landscape shifts to OpenX. In an OpenX ecosystem, banks and other players are going to have to strategically determine their roles based on their primary strengths. Will they act as suppliers, aggregators, or orchestrators? All players will need to recruit the right talent, leverage data and technology, and collaborate in order to competitively deliver the relevant services in this new ecosystem. To learn more about OpenX and its impact on the financial services industry, download the World Fintech Report 2019. I would like to outline you the concept of open experience and show you, let's say, an example how I think it could like in the reality. But before drawing a picture for you guys, uh, you have to bear with me. I was never a great artist and I guess I will never be one. And drawing pictures was never a skill of mine. So let's start maybe with the orchestrators because I think they are the kind of fundament and the pillars of that, let's call it the ecosystem. So we have here the orchestrators on the basement. I will also explain why they are the pillar for that ecosystem. Above, on the top, we have the suppliers. In the middle, we have a kind of that ecosystem. Uh, let's let's call it the the finance ecosystem. So there we have the aggregators. And if you ask me, mostly that are banks who already have existing client base. 
but of course there could be also other companies and enterprises like the non-financial brands remember embedded finance who would like to enter the traditional banking market and offering payments and banking services to their client base and now I will explain to you why the orchestrators is a kind of fundament or the pillars for that maybe the easy way to explain it to you guys is that the orchestrators are usually institutions with a kind of license could be a banking license an e-money license or another payments license or maybe a license to doing wealth management investing etc etc maybe just uh, from the non-financial brands perspective let's assume those those guys over here would like to enter the financial services market and they don't have a financial license or a banking license means they need a provider for a license and ideally an orchestrator provides them a license and they also provide them a kind of core banking system or a payments hub or they provide them only services but again first thing they provide is a kind of license they can have and then a service or a platform you know just just think about that Amazon is offering loads Amazon don't has a banking license. Amazon has a license which they get provided by Morgan Chase. And they offer loans to their merchants on their platform. You can have also a kind of white label solutions from those orchestrators. It means at the end of the day, you will label Amazon on that, but in the back office, all the things is Morgan Chase. The same stuff could be also work for the aggregators. They could also get some, let's say, uh, solutions, core solutions from the orchestrators. Um, and of course, what we definitely need for everything is a great API gateway to connect to the golden gate because we heard that the APIs are the entrance to the beautiful world of open banking and that's why you need at least a great API gateway where everyone can plug and play easily you know so to the suppliers itself there could be usually fintechs who are offering great services or insurtechs or other banks let's call them the FIs who just like to provide services for instance when we have a bank here who would like to offer asset management maybe they don't have a back office platform to do investments they can get immediately something from a financial services provider to offer asset management or wealth management as a service also a fintech can maybe provide that when they have the ability to do that even the aggregators between or among each other can do something like this to leverage the existing client base and that is exactly the idea behind that ecosystem no one will achieve something on its own in the future maybe the big ones or the tier one banks are always explaining that they are able to do everything on their own but if you are let's say a, a mid-sized bank or a smaller bank you have to collaborate to exist because I'm pretty sure that regarding the pandemic there will be a consolidation on the market or let's say some financial institutions will not be healthy again because of the pandemic because of the credit loss etc etc and the first thing banks will always do is a kind of cost saving and you can have cost savings when you can reduce your own product portfolio and can get or replace that existing product portfolio with services if it's not really healthy for your business or if you would like to keep your clients on your platform or in your bank you have to offer them new services new products and you make it pretty convenient or pretty much convenient to those clients that they will stay on your ecosystem so it's all about keeping the existing client base on your ecosystem 
leveraging the other existing client base of all the participants in that ecosystem to each other because at the end of the day there is a certain amount of clients there and the only thing you can get new clients is that you still are try to acquire those clients from another bank or another financial institutions but the healthier way is that you share those clients and that you leverage the transaction or the account or anything else volume that you have there so maybe that picture looks a little bit strange to you guys, but at the end of the day, it's all about partnerships. It's all about collaborations. It's all about sharing because we heard about the difference between buying, building or partnering. That is exactly the mentality, the spirit behind that. You have to share everything that you have to gain more clients and you have to get that services when you're a bank and you don't have that product to satisfy the need of your current client base. It sounds pretty simple to be perfectly honest. And I know that are, there are some, some marketplaces out there, but the final idea has not arrived in the minds yet. And that is something what has to be changed, especially the traditional banks have to adopt pretty soon something here, or they will be out of the game, especially the smaller ones. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed the content and have now a clearer picture about how the future of banking could look like, what role open banking already plays and what role open experience will play also in traditional finance and banking, especially combined with embedded finance and bringing new players on the market as a new threat to traditional bankers. With this being said, I would like to thank again everyone who already subscribed to the channel. Don't forget to smash the like button and let me know what you think about the future of banking or what your thoughts on the future of banking and finance are. Have a great one.